Hi everyone, this is Alex Treviño, a 3D artist from Mexico. As a self-thought artist, I work on different projects using Blender and Substance Painter, and I want to share my process with you. I'm happy to present the fifth and last video of the Lunar Rover series. In this video, I will show you how I complete the project. I highly recommend checking out the previous videos in this series, in which I cover the modeling and texturing process. The concept is the Lunar Rover Vehicle by Matthias Adolfsson, and if you want to see more of his work, check out his social media or the website. Now we are ready to finish the project. I break down the final process into four stages to wrap up the project. First, prepare the rover and character for rendering. Then, create a compelling environment to bring the scene to life. Next, fine-tune all the necessary settings for a rendering process, and finally, implement post-production techniques to improve the images. To prepare the rover and character for rendering, ensure the use of ACES in the Blender's color management. Then, import the texture maps in EXR format correctly, and finally, create a dedicated shader designated only for the headlights. To enable ACES in Blender, I use the Oscar Blend ACES 1.2 configuration which replaces the default filmic color management with ACES. I tested this configuration in Blender 3.5 and 3.6, which works perfectly. To verify the configuration is working, navigate to the color management settings in Blender and ensure that the display device is set to ACES. Then, I import the texture maps using Node Wrangler, automatically connecting them to the principal BSDF node. And since we are using EXR images, all image nodes must be changed to color space ACES CG for proper functionality. While you can manually adjust each node every time, ChatGPT made a script and add on for easy one click conversion. You can download them for free on my Gumroad or you can try ChatGPT. Next, I divide the headlight glass into roughness and displacement to create a shader. For the displacement, I generate three maps using the wave texture node, circular lines, vertical lines, and a joining map. With this, we have the displacement effect. Next, I combine the roughness map created in Substance Painter with a preview result to generate the final roughness map. With this shader complete, this section of the project is finished. To create the terrain, I approach in three stages. First, generate the necessary maps using Gaia. Then, transfer these maps to Blender. And finally, combine these maps with Megascans to add the final details. For the first step, I use the simple and powerful Gaia program to create the environment terrain. By combining two crater geoprimitives, I create the base of the terrain. Employing the Hydrofix node, I generate the crater entrance, followed by the erosion and micro erosion nodes to add complexity and improve the natural features. The canyonizer node adds a complex details, and a final erosion layer combines all elements. Once the terrain is complete, I export the necessary maps, a displacement map in EXR format, and five masks, the rock map, protrusion, curvature, soil, and slope as PNGs. And with this, we are ready to use them in Blender. Now, to make the terrain in Blender, start by adding a plane and applying multiple subdivisions for added detail. Include the Displace modifier and add the EXR displacement texture created in Gaia. Control the displacement intensity using the strength parameter and fix the edge errors using UV coordinates. Remember that increasing subdivisions produce more displacement details, but consumes more resources. For the shader, I start by selecting a fitting base material from Megascans, and then downloaded the corresponding EXR textures. Using Node Wrangler, I incorporated these textures into the shader. Next, I added the masks created in Gaia using each mask to modify the base color through multiple hue saturation value nodes. Finally, in the experimental version of Blender, I added the subdivision modifier with the adaptative option enabled. Now, 
let's ensure everything is set up for rendering using light groups, render passes, and the file output. These techniques allow us to control light elements, separate the specific elements for rendering, organize the output effectively, and fine tune the rendering process. With light groups, you can segment your lights. You can use area, spot, sun, and point lights. Also, HDRI or even emissive objects, giving us the option now to render each group separately. To do this, you have to create the groups and then assign each light emitter to the group it belongs to. Now, let's take a closer look at the render passes. You can include all of them or just the one you find necessary. You can check them out in the viewport. I mainly use the mist pass in this project, but added a few others like diffuse color, glossy direct, and ambient occlusion. Now we can proceed to the next step, which involves using the file output node to export both the light and the render passes automatically. First, go to the compositor and add the file output node. Using the shortcut N, access the node tab and select the desired image format for export. In this case, I use 16-bit PNGs. Once the light and render passes are listed in the file output node, we connect each socket to the file output. Then we need to specify the destination folder where we want to save the files. Now we are ready to render. With the renders completed, we will focus now on the final touch-up using Adobe Photoshop. This stage can be broken down into six parts. Import multiple files at once, camera raw adjustments, using light passes, applying LUTs, adding emphasis to the image, and lastly, applying different filters. To import multiple files simultaneously, navigate to File, Scripts, and select Load Files into Stack. This time-saving feature allows you to import multiple render passes simultaneously, eliminating the need to import each pass individually. This is especially useful when working with many files, streamlining your workflow, and increasing efficiency. With all the passes imported into Photoshop, I organize them in a folder and create a new folder for post-production. Start with the base image, I select it and open it in Camera Raw. I increase the shadow to brighten dark areas and texture, clarity and sharpening accentuate details and improve the appearance. Next, I created a new folder dedicated to the light passes. I carefully choose specific light passes suitable for the desired effect and blend them into the composition using the screen blending mode. This allow the light passes to interact with the underlying layers, improving the illumination of the image. Later, I try different LUTs to get a cinematic aesthetic to the image. Also, I employ an emphasis technique to highlight the image focal point. By creating a subtle gradient selection around the center of interest, I use the screen blending mode to brighten this area, improving its importance. Then I employ a reverse selection and apply the multiply blending mode to darken the outer areas, ensuring the focus remains on the main subject. In the final touch, I apply the noise filter to add subtle texture to the image. And lastly, I incorporate a touch of chromatic aberration to create a slight color separation effect. And with this, we have finished the complete project. Now we know how to set up the textures in Blender, how to export and import all the renders and light passes, and how to do post-production inside Photoshop. Having an NVIDIA 3080 Ti through this project was priceless. It improved the efficiency and speed of the entire workflow, especially during this final stage. The ability to control each light individually became painless. The improved rendering speed allowed me for more samples. And most importantly, the real-time rendering capacity boosted the decision-making process. And that concludes the project. I hope you found this series informative and enjoyable. And to see the final high-quality images, visit my ArtStation page.
If you want to see more content like this, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, remember to join the community and showcase your talent by sharing your creations with the hashtag StudioShare. Thank you and goodbye.